Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Max Mao and I graduated from Yale University. I'd love to share a little bit more about my story, how I got into Yale, and how you can get into Yale as well. Let's get into it. Oh boy. Oh man, we're doing a huge throwback here. I'm gonna need a minute to reflect on everything. For you to better understand my application, I'd like to first share with you a little bit more about the people who shaped who I am. Growing up with immigrant parents, I found myself at a young age just watching how hard my parents worked to make a new living in this country. My dad was a pioneer. He was the first and only member in his family to immigrate from Shanghai, China to United States, where he sought to obtain his PhD and he essentially used education as a catalyst to starting a new life. My parents didn't come from wealth whatsoever. When my father first immigrated over to the United States, he had very little English speaking ability, the clothes on his back, two dilapidated suitcases, and a total of like $50. After my father moved, my mother immigrated from Shanghai as well, and she worked multiple jobs in order to help support for their family. Life for my parents was not easy. Nothing was ever given to them. They earned and they worked for every single thing that they ever had in their life, and they deserve the world for that. Like many first generation kids, seeing my parents not only having to adapt culturally, but also having to create a new future for themselves where the future was unknown. Watching them every single day work tirelessly, work relentlessly, that was deeply grained inside of me. And that's a huge part of my application that I focused on as well. That really takes me to a brief introduction of really my story. To be quite honest, I didn't really know what Ivy League institutions were until early high school. I was born in a suburban community in Alabama and attended public school systems in Alabama throughout high school. Growing up in a very middle class family, uh, I was never enrolled in any private programs and never paid for any tutoring services as we weren't financially able to utilize those. My parents were very strict on focusing on academics as that was essentially the catalyst that allowed them to come to this country to start a new future and they really thought the same could be used for my brother and I. All right, well, with that being said, I'd love to introduce my stats, the academics, and some more of the details that got me into Yale University. I graduated from a public Alabama high school called Florence High School and was ranked three out of 400 students. I was awarded valedictorian. Uh, as per my school, that title was given out to the top 1% of students in the graduating class. So even though I wasn't number one in the class, it was awesome being able to still count myself as one of those. I had an ACT composite score of 34, and the final exam that I took in April of 2015, I believe, the score breakdown was a 33 for English, a 35 for reading, 35 for science, and a 34 for math. My understanding currently is that standardized tests may be optional at certain universities, um, but my recommendation is if you're able to take it and you do well, it will only benefit your application. All right, and uh, some more academic logistics. I graduated as an AP scholar with honor and I got the highest GPA in the following classes that I'll throw up in the screen over here. As for extracurricular activities, I love to break those down into uh, four main categories that I utilized. The first of which is sports, second of which is educational, third of which is leadership, and the fourth, last but not least, is volunteering. And honestly, um, I'm really taking a trip back in time. Making this video has been super nostalgic for me, so I'll read off a couple of my extracurricular activities and what I thought to be some of the main points that helped me in my application. So we'll start with sports. Sports was a huge part of my application. I did sports all throughout high school, um, primarily soccer. Stats that I shared in my application were, I was a captain of my varsity soccer team for three years. I was nominated the most valuable player during my senior year. I was nominated um, soccer player of the year for a local newspaper. I was nominated to the state team's all-star soccer team and was nominated as a team captain. And I played club soccer for three years and served as the under 19 captain for a local club for two years. All right, so let's move on to educational then. Um, in terms of educational activities and clubs, I was the uh, chess champion at a local um, Renaissance fair in high school for three years. I participated and was a member of my high school orchestra for four years. I played the violin. Honestly, I was pretty terrible at violin, so I hope there's no footage out there of me playing. And then some random other awards I'll throw up on the screen that uh, honestly range in different types of areas. Let's jump into leadership then. Um, I was involved 
in a lot of high school leadership positions. For Alabama Boys State, I won the Legion Bronze Citizenship Medal. Um, I was the Boys State State Treasurer. And for my high school, I served as the National Spanish Honor Society Vice President for three years. I served as the Class Vice President uh, for my high school for three years as well. And I was the Spanish Club Vice President uh, during my senior year. That pretty much sums up all of my leadership activities. In terms of volunteering, uh, that is the fourth main category. And prior to going to university, I had thought in my head that I wanted to be pre-med and I wanted to become a doctor. So I did quite a bit of clinical volunteering. 255 hours of volunteering at a local hospital over the course of four years. And I did those volunteering hours during the summertime. I also did um, another like 150 volunteering hours in miscellaneous other areas. That pretty much sums up the sports, educational, leadership, and volunteering activities. Now that we've gone into a little bit more about my stats in terms of academics, why don't we now dive into how to best set yourself up for success? I've broken this down into a couple of areas. The number one thing is having good academics. There's really no sugarcoating that. Getting into an Ivy League institution is incredibly difficult. I'm sure you've heard of all these stories of students who have perfect marks, maybe those perfect standardized scores, perfect GPA valedictorians, and they're still waitlisted or rejected. There is no 100% guaranteed way to get into a university. I like to tell students that I've mentored that Having good academics gets your foot into the door and the rest of your application is what really makes you stand out and gets you the edge. In terms of the rest of your application, what I mean by this is uh, really extracurriculars, having a longer term commitment to activities that you're passionate about, volunteering or being a part of a club for anywhere between like two to five years or even longer. That really shows the admissions office that you are focused on what you're doing. Admissions officers, they see this longer term commitment to clubs as less of a risk with admitting students because it shows that the student knows that they are balanced, they know how to uh, maintain long term commitments and that they're focused on their goals. I think that's one of the more important things. I think the main thing here is it's really difficult to fake your enthusiasm or your passion for something. When you're actively doing something that you enjoy, I think you naturally smile, you naturally give off your energy, your emotions, and that can be a useful and powerful tool to put into your application essay. That really leads me to my third and final point, which is your personal statement. Arguably, in my opinion, this is the most important part. You could have pristine academics, you could have pristine extracurriculars, but the personal statement is really where you get to share who you are as a person. Like, who is Max? Why does Max care so much about these academics? Why does Max do the activities that he does? The personal statement really helps to consolidate all that information and you really get to tell your story. It's your first time to brag on yourself for all the hard work that you've done and it's your first time to really share about who you are and who you want others to see you as. My recommendation is definitely write from the heart, spare no details, and make the reader feel any emotions or passions that you have. For my personal statement that I wrote for Yale, I will admit, when I initially wrote it, I actually cried writing it because I, because I wrote about some very deep moments in my life and my family's lives. I think genuinely being able to channel in those emotions, it allowed the admissions officer to really see who I was and to really feel what I felt as well. Thanks so much for listening in to not only my story and my background, but also um, hopefully some useful tips on how you can best set yourself up for success when applying to any university or even graduate program as well. I think the most important things here are, you only live one life, so you might as well do what you enjoy. Focus on what you enjoy doing and the rest gets a lot easier. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one.